I don't think a lot of guys set out to start a collection of anything. I think the collection just happens by mistake and you're hoarding cars, you're hoarding watches and someone in your family gets upset and you say, no, 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 I'm not hoarding, this is a collection. <laughs> this is different. This has value, it's a collection. I'm Spike First, and we're in Los Angeles, California. I like stainless steel sport watches, and I like uh, anything that has a racing history to it. The old Hoyers, I like the, the, the Tudors and the Rolexes. Those are the ones I mainly focus on. I moved to New York uh, and was an intern with enough money to live for one month. And if it doesn't work out, I have to go back to Boston. I've got to go back to school. <laughs> I got a job at Saturday Night Live. I was an intern on Letterman. And then a couple of years in between, suddenly I'm a writer on David Letterman. And I have enough money to survive. And I have a little extra money. This is what I saw sitting in the window of Columbus Avenue and 69th Street, the little jeweler store right there. It was this watch. It had a little light on it projected down, so it was sparkling. <laughs> and that's a Tag Heuer 2000. That is what we call the Taproot watch, the original, the, the one that started it all. That watch reminds me of uh, how far I came from, you know, graduating high school to finding my way in life. From there, as far as a watch that I collected, I didn't buy anything until I came out to Los Angeles. And that's this Tag Heuer 1964 Carrera reissue. The dial on the watch, it's a, it's a lot smaller. At the time, it didn't feel small is beautiful, it's like, it's, it's silver with blue on it. It's just a beautiful looking dial. That watch is my first year of Seinfeld. It was really a great and wonderful experience, but we never left the offices. We were, we were there seven days a week, just locked into this, this little joint. So we would open up magazines on our breaks and there's this Tag Heuer. And I said, boy, I really, want, I really want this watch. And I was sitting with fellow writer Jennifer Crittenden, and she said, well, you're going to buy that watch today. <laughs> and I said, I am. She goes, go buy it. And I went and I bought that watch. Maybe a year after, went to a meeting, um, a general meeting with Tom Hanks and his head of production. And I walked in, and we all sat down. All of us were wearing the same watch. And we all did this. We put our watches together. And we said, look at this. That's how that meeting began. Now, I don't, I don't think I ever did anything with Tom Hanks. I don't think we've worked together yet. But I remember that moment, and I remember it when I wear the watch, and it makes me laugh. I went from the new watches to the vintage watches. I saw this guy on my street at the coffee bean. I said, what, what are you wearing on your wrist there? It was a stainless steel watch with a blue dial. And he said, this is a Tudor Submariner. Well, I need to get one. So I, I called, he said, if you ever come across a Tudor Submariner, I want it. They called me the first week of production in my late night show, and it was my birthday as well, and said, we found your watch. Someone just traded it in. They go, it's not just a Tudor Submariner, it's a French Navy sub. And I said, okay, don't know what you're saying. He goes, Marine National, 1977, the French Navy used them for diving and mine clearance. And I said, the French are involved in mine clearance in the late 70s, and they needed a watch for that? They go, don't, don't mind that. But just know this watch comes with uh, military papers and decommissioned papers, and it's the rare version of the watch you're looking for. And that's this Tudor French Navy sub that I have. That's turned out to be a very rare watch. Rolex, for me growing up, I didn't even know the word. It just, it, it, nobody had a Rolex where, where I grew up. They didn't have that stuff. My mom was a nurse and she wore a Timex and that's what you wore. You went to Kmart to get the Timex. So Rolex for me was the guy with the open shirt, the gold chain and the new Ferrari. And I was like, I, I don't want to be that guy. So the idea of a Rolex was really a foreign idea to me. And, and I was processing it through new Rolexes and who wore those new Rolexes. At some point when I'm hosting my late night show, I get the Daytona bug, the early Daytona bug. Might be Jason Bateman, it might not be. The two of us had been seeing these watches and you know, you need, a, you need someone to kind of make you crazy when someone else wants something and you want it, it's two guys, and you, that's all you're thinking about. You know whether it's in one week or one year you're gonna get that thing. And when my show got picked up for the third year, I decided to commemorate that with the Rolex Daytona. 
and it's the 6263. It really looks beautiful in a photograph. It's a very beautiful dial, and for a small watch for 39 millimeter, it's just one of those classic watches that everybody loves. That's a watch that, that, I'll, uh, that I wear daily. You know, I'm wearing probably my most uh, favorite new watch, the most wearable watch, this Daytona right here, the Daytona 116500 with the black dial and serochrome bezel. I, I love this thing. It's 40 millimeters. When I put it on, the first time I put it on, I just felt like I pulled the sword out of the stone. It's just a perfect watch. Cars and watches are inextricably kind of brought together, you know, and, and I, I think a lot about this. Obviously, there's a lot of history in motorsports um, with, with Rolex and, and, and watch companies and motor racing. The old Hoyer guys have their own thing. It's, it's very much like the car world. Like, you know, I think of the old Porsche guys are different from the old Land Rover guys or different from the old Ferrari guys than the new Ferrari guys. Watches are the same way. In a lot of ways, they're, they're really nice uh, conversation starters. Now we're gonna do something fun. I'm gonna match the watches I brought to some of the cars in this hangar. New Daytona. What would I wear with a new Daytona? Oh boy. We have to do this one right here. This is a, uh, a Gullwing, Mercedes Gullwing, right here. This is probably the blue chip collector car of all collector cars. You know, you look inside and you see the plaid seats and the suitcase and the steering wheel. I'm gonna also match the Rolex 6263 to this car. That's just a, a classic, uh, beautiful timepiece, and this is probably one of the most beautiful car designs ever made. And, you know, w when you think of, as far as an investment classic car, there's nothing better than a going. This car stops traffic. You are the ultimate gentleman in that car. The 64 Carrera. The Swedish Ice Racer is a Carrera. Carrera GT Porsche 4 cam, that blue uh, indices and uh, that silver dial, a vintage look, a small watch. This car for sure would be worn with the uh, Carrera reissue from the 90s. Even though it's a 90s watch, it's styled like a 1960s car and that's in the zone for this guy right here. This car looks like you'd also need just a, a, a nice old worn pair of jeans to wear with this too and a ripped t-shirt. That watch, this car, again, you're getting about 30 life-altering minutes before you come crashing down. That's uh, from experience, but those 30 minutes are gonna be magical. Okay, Tudor French Navy sub, <sighs> French dive watch, <laughs> mine clearance. <laughs> it's a beautiful old silver blue timepiece. It would be one of these two cars. That's 66 911 there in the dark blue, and you can see the dark blue paint right there in the light. It's really hard, that car looks black but in the light you see the blue. I would match that watch to this car, because again, the silver and blue thing. It's just an insane car, and that's an insane watch. And there you go. In the beginning, I didn't know anything about watches, and I think I'm a few degrees above that right now. I still really don't know anything about them, but I like the way they look, and I like the way they make me feel. I think you have to start learning about yourself as a collector and wearing watches that you feel comfortable with and like to learn about and you know meeting with other people about who also collect these watches and get involved in the community. You know, it, it's a lot like cars in that way. It's fun. It, it connects you to people in an interesting way that you don't normally get connected to. And, and that's probably the biggest pitch I can make for being for collecting a watch is you'll meet you make a lot of new friends.